Welcome, everybody. I believe the recording has started. Yep, looks Zoom's telling me we're recording, so that means we're we got our sprint demo ready for uh, us to post on YouTube. Uh, we do this every two weeks. However, this specific one is the first one in 2020, and as the first one 2020, we cover four weeks because we we take a staggered holiday over to the end of December and the the New Year season. And as a as that. Uh, in our four calendar weeks, we had about two and a half weeks of engineering time, uh, of team time, uh, but we got a lot of good stuff done. So we're excited to show that to everybody. The Looking really quickly, uh, you can see on the Indy SDK side, we completed a whole lot of bug fixing. We just, our two big focuses over the last month was bug fixing and completing uh, Aries interop uh, protocol support in libvcx that's in the Indy SDK. Really excited about that. Uh, we, with the completion of that protocol work for Aries and libvcx, uh, we think libvcx, we don't have any new features we're keen to add to libvcx in the short term. Uh, our, we're gonna turn our focus now onto Aries shared libraries and, and, and maturing the Aries layer of the stack. And then we'll figure out how to transition from libvcx over. Uh, so we're excited about that, that, that people using libvcx today can have a, can work with other Aries clients and have a clean transition. On the Indy node side, we similarly did a bunch of bug fixing. We also uh, improved the way the transaction author agreement works. We mentioned, we demoed some of this in our last sprint demo, so you can go back through the playlist history to, to see that. Uh, but we fixed some bugs there. Uh, and when we did our, in 2019, we made a lot of improvements to Indy Node, uh, we, especially to the view change. That was the, the most technically complicated thing I think we did in 2019. And the, we identified a bunch of corner cases with that rollout. And so we've been ticking those off, fixing those. Uh, so that was our main focus. And with that, we're, we're finally ready to start working on some new features in Indy Node that we've been looking to do for a long time. So. Uh, over the next couple of months, we're going to focus on architecture for DID doc support, W3C verifiable credentials that we call rich schemas because that's the main thing, main new thing they've added. And uh, we, we're digging into the new revocation that's been done in URSA. We need to start exposing all that stuff in Node. So that's going to be our focus going forward. So with that brief introduction, the plan for today, let's talk about the recent releases. Uh, and then we'll talk about the additional protocol support in libvcx. And uh, then we'll talk about some of those bug fixes that we completed in the node. Uh, fairly fairly uh, interesting corner cases for where view change could fail or, or the primary selection algorithm, uh, especially during promotion when uh, the, the sovereign network is excited to start doing a dynamic uh, validator selection to be able to say, oh, this one's performing well, that should be in the pool or this should leave. So we've been focused a lot recently on testing that promotion and demotion nodes, adding nodes to the pool and removing nodes from the pool uh, goes smoothly. So that's, that's been this set of, of work. So I will stop sharing my screen and let Sergey share his screen. Uh, thank you, Richard. So I'd like to tell a bit about our release at the end of 2019. So here's my screen. Actually, we had uh, two releases out at the end of the previous year. Uh, actually, they are almost the same with a small difference around indice UI. Uh, so I would mostly talking about uh, 1.14.0. And point one is just a small box <coughs> in indice UI. So as Richard mentioned, uh, there are some improvements around LVCX areas, uh, we added support for free more protocols. We fixed some bugs, some divergency between RFCs and uh, the implementations. Uh, I think we still have some ongoing discussion in community and probably we will have more fixes while stabilizing the areas flows while working on areas central profile, but we don't expect more feature like changes in the VCX, only bug fixes, I think. Uh, the second point of the NDR release was transaction offer agreement changes. 
in the our previous demo, uh, there was a, a part around those changes in in the node side. Uh, so in this release, uh, we also have in the SDK API updated. Uh, as you may know, uh, this set of in the SDK API is an experimental change. So we are using the ability to change that API to make it more clear and uh, easy to use. In fact, uh, they change uh, the main builder, but this changes affects only the network maintainers, not regular users. Uh, there's two more parameters around uh, transactional agreement, certification timestamp and retirement timestamp. And uh, one more function for network maintainer is a special helper to disable all TA on the ledger. And for sure, we have some improvements in ECLI as well around TA. As usual, you can find more details around uh, API changes in um, migration guide. So it's devoted to uh, Ledger API in this case and TA. And also I'd like to mention that in um, API in code base, you also can find more details about current case. I think it's a long one. Um, depending on which version you have on uh, your ledger and uh, what you would like to do with transactional agreement, uh, some parameters of this call may uh, became and change from optional to mandatory and vice versa. So please take a look on this detailed description of this API call. And the last thing I'd like to mention here is uh, probably as soon as the latest Indie Node version will be available on all major Indie instances like Sovereign Network, we are going to make uh, this API more straightforward and uh, prohibit some, uh, some combination of the parameter. But for now, uh, there are a lot of flexibility to support both old version of Indie Node and the newer one. I think that's it from my side, or maybe one more update for the users of Indie SDK. Uh, in Anarchy's flow, we also have some changes in the flow. It's not uh, actually the changes in the flow, but it's more, more validation. Uh, more validation uh, for non-creds. Uh, so let me reshare the, the migration guide and maybe the release notes. Uh, so we improve the nonce validation uh, during the non flow. And if your application is misuse the nonce parameter, for example, pass incorrect data to it, starting from this release in this DK is more uh, is doing more checks around that, and you might see new errors. But actually, it's just it's more like a bug fixing rather than changing the flow. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you, Sergey. Uh, the Sovereign Foundation currently plans to start enforcing the transaction author agreement in February, uh, depending on how the the upgrade process goes. It might be March, but we're, we're keen to get these fixes out so that it's easier for people to support that in, in the very near future. So Artem, you're gonna take us through the, the authn flow. Well, hello everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm going to show how verifiable credentials can be used to pass authentication with OpenID. Uh, there is a project provided by BCGov. Uh, it's actually a web application which requires identification. Uh, in addition to us usual uh, user passwords, there is an opportunity to pass it with using a uh, verifiable credential. Uh, there is uh, three sites in this application. Uh, Reliant part, uh, which actually is this current uh, web application uh, open uh, ID provider. Uh, it uses Akapai for it. And uh, identity owner, 
I will use the uh, libvcx library to pass it, uh, especially Python Viper demo for it. Uh, next, uh, in addition, there is also um, uh, IndiePool network. I run locally. Uh, it's for it's like for um, public identity storage. Uh, so uh, let's go. I already performed some preparation steps regarding running all components, and now I'm ready to pass it. Uh, first, uh, there is a link. Uh, we had to pass a proof request, uh, which will be used to authentication. And next, we go to these links and uh, use verifiable credential access. Uh, here we can see a QR code, uh, which actually contains a uh, URL presented below. Uh, if we go, we'll go by this URL in our browser. Uh, we will see a request which contains a uh, base64 encoded string. And we, the string actually is a proof request. Uh, this proof request matches two areas format uh, uh, and only difference in this proof request contains a, a service decorator. A uh, service decorator can be used uh, for messages uh, which are self, uh, contain self-important information. It's like a short version of the ID document. Uh, so when we uh, receive this kind of message, we don't need, don't need uh, uh, any connection established before we can uh, reply to this information directly. Hey, Arthur, uh, can you go back to the base64 decode and just highlight the service decorator? Uh, yes, I can use better view. That was really fast. <laughs> uh, yeah, so here we can see this is our base64 decoder proof request. Uh, and see uh, here, service decorator, which contains an important and one recipient case. Actually, uh, this service decorator provided from Akapai instance, which is run it, and we will send proof to this Akapai instance. So, Thank you. Uh, let's take this URL and go to Python demo. First, I need to issue a credential for Alice. I have Faber Python, uh, Faber Alice, our uh, demo, and now I already established connection, and now I issue needed credential for it. It takes some time to communication, and in the by well, now we have Alice, which is ready to pass uh, OpenID challenge. Uh, we choose third option, put a URL. So here we can see it successfully passed. If we will go to our application, uh, our page was redirected to updated account information. That actually means that we successfully passed challenge and we got access to application. So I think uh, that's it from my side. Excellent, I appreciate that demo. That's gonna be really useful. Uh, now, anybody who's building an application on LiveVCX can support the, the, the verifiable credential auth and flow, OIDC auth and flow that VCGov is pushing. We appreciate the work that the team at Matter Global did to pioneer uh, in their contract with VCGov how this would work. And uh, the next step is going to be for us to build on this for, for Evernim applications to be able to support that. So we're going to work on that quite, quite soon. Yeah, one more note, uh, this, uh, the script that I showed currently in the proof request state, uh, it will update our usual Python demo, but I think we will merge it soon. Excellent, thank you, Artem. So Alex, uh, what about the node releases? Yeah, hello everyone, let me share my screen. Uh, so uh, I have to demo, so let me start with the uh, uh, release of IndiaNode issued on the, at the end of 2019. Uh, this is uh, release 1.12.1 and there are two parts, uh, two main uh, parts in this release. Uh, the first one is a support of uh, transaction author agreement improvements. Uh, these improvements um, have been already discussed uh, uh, during the previous demo. Uh, and also Sergey mentioned them uh, during SDK release. So this is just a node 
uh, in the node part of these uh, TA improvements. You can see a bunch of tickets related to this. And also the uh, latest release uh, contains uh, some useful uh, stability fixes, uh, including, for example, the fixes uh, related to the limit of uh, get uh, credit for a schema, which was also presented during the last demo, improvements in uh, Zerium Q on the transport layer reconnection, uh, improvements in uh, performance uh, related to BLS signatures, uh, and so on. Uh, it's a Worth mentioning that uh, uh, when preparing the last uh, latest release, uh, we continued the bug of our view change uh, process. And we discovered a couple of edge cases, as uh, Richard mentioned, uh, related to uh, the view change and particular the process of primary selection. Uh, when uh, there are some nodes uh, demoted or added, or promoted. So if uh, under some circumstances, it doesn't mean that uh, promotion, demotion, uh, is broken, it works, but there are some edge cases uh, that under some circumstances uh, it can lead uh, to issues that the node is not able to finish view change or uh, yeah, mostly something about this. The, the restart is a workaround, but uh, nevertheless, uh, this sprint uh, we uh, fixed uh, these issues, so the next uh, release should have a solution for them. And uh, saying this, let me jump to the second demo related to Indie Node. And this is a, a description of the first issue uh, of these edge cases. And Andrew, uh, the next demo will show uh, the second uh, set of issues. So uh, let me start with the issue description. Uh, the, the first issue uh, is that a lagging node uh, may be the only one started view change and uh, so that it cannot finish it. Uh, and this may happen if uh, we have uh, uh, up to F nodes added or promoted uh, in one batch. So if you have a pool of uh, four nodes, then F, the maximum number of failures is just one node. So if you just add a one node, then the issue is uh, can be reproduced. Uh, for the sovereign network where we have like 25 nodes, uh, the probability of this issue is not so high because F there is about uh, eight. So it requires some uh, really uh, unique circumstances. Nevertheless, the issue is the following that, uh, let's assume that we are adding node five to a pool of four nodes, four nodes. And uh, let's assume that this node is added, that corresponding transaction is uh, ordered on uh, nodes two, three, and four, but hasn't been uh, ordered yet on the node one. And let me remind that uh, every addition or demotion of a node uh, is a transaction, is a transaction in the ledger, in the pool ledger in particular. So it follows all the same rules uh, as for any transaction in our system. And uh, according to the logic that uh, was before the fix, uh, the uh, quorum parameters, for example, the number of nodes, the F and so on, they are updated uh, immediately after the node is added. That is, uh, the corresponding transaction is committed. So what we have, initially we had uh, the values of quorum that N is equal to four, F is one. We're a pool of four nodes, but once uh, the node five transaction is ordered on nodes two, three, and four, uh, we have n equal to five on these nodes. And on node one, it's still four. Uh, then, uh, according to our procedure, once a node is added, uh, the view change is started. And uh, uh, what we see here that uh, only nodes uh, two, three, and four propagated the instance change message since only these nodes added the view, uh, added the node. And for node one, the quorum to start the view change, the quorum of instance changes is N minus F, which is, which is three. And for nodes two uh, till four, the quorum N minus F is four, but they have only three instance changes. So nodes two, three, and four didn't start the view change, but node one started. So it's the only node uh, uh, which started the view change. This is the first issue. Uh, the second issue, the second issue is that uh, a legend node may use wrong N and F quorum values and never finish view change. 
uh, again if there are some uh, nodes transactions being processed. Uh, in this case, we already have a pool of five nodes and uh, we are going to demote node five. Uh, and again, this uh, transaction, demotion is also a transaction. Uh, it's uh, ordered only on nodes two, three, and four. So you can see on these nodes, uh, it was ordered, committed, and according to our uh, logic that uh, was before the fix, uh, the quorum values n is updated. So on nodes two, three, and four, n is equal to four since we demoted node uh, five. And n is actually the number of nodes in the pool. And on uh, node one, the n is still equal to five. Then all nodes start the view change, and let's assume this is a view change to uh, view equal three. Uh, they all um, uh, select a master primary according to, against the node registry as well as at the beginning of previous view. Uh, this part was fixed uh, already in the previous release. They all uh, select the same uh, primary. This is node four. And then node four, uh, all the nodes they exchange view change messages. I would like to refer you to our view change documentation. And um, I think there was a demo uh, last sprint describing this new view change uh, diagrams that can help you to understand how this process is done. But uh, the result here that nodes two, three, and four uh, for them, n minus f, which is a quorum to finish the view change is equal to three. So they finish the view change with uh, three uh, view change messages. Uh, but for node one, the quorum is four, since uh, n is still equal to five for node one. So n minus f is still equal to four for node one. And once node one receives a new view message from the primary with just three view changes, it cannot finish the view change because uh, it, uh, node one thinks that, it's, uh, uh, that it doesn't have a quorum. So all nodes except node one finished view change and node one is still in the view change. This is a second issue. So what is the reason uh, of this issue? Uh, as I already mentioned, uh, previously N and F uh, have been recalculated right after a node transaction uh, is committed. So commit is not a synchronous, in general, or ordering is a kind of not a synchronous operation. Some nodes may uh, already order these transactions, some may, for some nodes, uh, it can be still in flight. So we don't have any guarantees that it's done on all, all the nodes. We have only the guarantee that it's done on at least N minus F nodes. So on uh, these F nodes, this node one in our examples, it can be that um, you have different quorums for instance change messages to be able to trigger the view change. You have different quorums for view change and new view messages uh, in order to finish the view change. Uh, and also we may have different number of replicas created and selected. Uh, and primaries on these replicas uh, can be also different, which is uh, critical for the audit ledger. Uh, what is a fix? So what is a fix? Uh, the main, uh, the essence of this fix is that we should not change N and F right after no transaction is committed. Uh, when uh, the number of nodes in the pool is changed, we do the view change instead. And uh, the fix that we change, that we calculate N and F and calculate primaries for backups at the end of the view change. By end of the view change, we mean when the first transaction in a new view is committed. Uh, this is done so in order to be able to correctly propagate the primaries uh, for the audit ledger so that other nodes can uh, catch up it uh, properly. Uh, and, uh, and F and backup primaries, uh, they all calculated at the beginning of our view according to the node registry as it was at the beginning of this uh, view. So that's it's, uh, deterministic and it guarantees that they all have the same data, the same uh, quorum values. And uh, in order to guarantee that for the new view, we don't have similar situations, we don't allow processing of any uh, three-phase commit messages in a view until the first transaction in the view is committed. Uh, this diagram uh, represents uh, these changes, this fix. You can see it's uh, actually almost the same diagram as this one for issue two. But here by bold green, uh, we mark the difference. Now, once the demoted node transaction is ordered, we don't update N immediately. So it's still uh, equal to five on all the nodes, regardless of if uh, the demoted transaction is ordered, applied or not. Uh, 
So they all select the same master primary. They all uh, set uh, in process new view with the same number of view changes and expect the same quorums. They all finish the view change. Uh, then they all can order the first transaction in the new view. And only after this, they update N, F, and select the backup primaries against the just changed node, node registry. So in this case, after the view change is finished, they only this point, they will have updated N equal to four, uh, F is still one, a master primary is node four, and backup primary is node one. You can see that it's uh, selected against uh, the node registry at the beginning of last view. So node five is already demoted and it doesn't participate in the selection of uh, backup primaries. Uh, in this slide, you can see references uh, what uh, services, what classes in the code are touched by uh, this fix. Uh, and uh, there's a number of tests uh, proving that uh, everything works uh, as, as expected. In particular, this test representing the issue one, and you can see that it passes uh, now. Uh, so that's all. Any questions? That is a fairly involved corner case. I can see why our testing didn't didn't detect it originally. I, I'm actually impressed that during the simulation test that we found this before before it impacted anything on the main network. Because uh, there are a number of things that have to all happen in the right order for, for the, that problem, uh, either of those problems. Thank you very much, Alex. Andrew's gonna take us through a, another of these corner cases. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen. Well, I'm going to tell uh, uh, about uh, uh, another H case regarding to primary Andrew, selection. Sir. Oh, no. So, you hit no. present, and I think it went to a different. No? No? Uh, you should, I think, present uh, the different window where your presentation started. Oh, sorry. This one? Can you see? Uh, you can see the slides, yeah. Slide. And now? No? Mm, okay. Um, uh, uh, again, uh, I'm telling about. Uh, I'm going to tell about each um, uh, uh, another edge case uh, regarding to primary selection in uh, our view change process. Uh, well, uh, let's uh, imagine the situation that uh, we have a pool uh, of uh, seven nodes, uh, for example, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and uh, now. Uh, pool uh, is in state uh, that uh, view number is five and uh, primary uh, uh, primary for all nodes is uh, f. Uh, uh, from this uh, moment, uh, uh, we have uh, some uh, legend, uh, some some legend behind node. It doesn't it doesn't matter what uh, uh, what the node. For example, it can be t. Uh, then a uh, uh, pool ordered uh, a node transaction for adding new node uh, to pool. And uh, uh, now we have logic that uh, after adding new, uh, after adding or uh, demoting some node, uh, 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 we will run a view change process. And uh, 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 normal nodes, normal nodes, uh, uh, we'll uh, jump to view uh, six, but uh, legend node uh, not. Uh, and uh, we have uh, a primary node uh, G uh, for normal nodes, uh, um, for legend node, no. Uh, after this, uh, 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 oh, 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 sorry. Uh, so the significant uh, remark here is that uh, uh, changed uh, node registry will be used uh, only for future uh, view change process, not for current. Uh, after that, we uh, have uh, 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 after that uh, some of view change uh, will be happened, and uh, uh, pool uh, will jump to uh, 
uh, uh, UNO7 and uh, 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 in uh, uh, into this uh, we change pro process uh, uh, the previously locked node uh, uh, will be um, will be awaked and uh, 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 all of uh, normal node uh, will have uh, uh, updated node registry for primary selection, but uh, uh, like legend behind node not. And this uh, in this case, uh, uh, legend uh, latched not uh, will choose a primary uh, for uh, for primary uh, node uh, node A, um, but uh, other nodes uh, will choose uh, node H. Uh, well, what's about the fix? Uh, the simplest way to fix uh, this issue uh, it's, uh, is uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, uh, process and store all of uh, new U messages from all of uh, nodes, and uh, uh, in uh, in a normal way, uh, you change uh, would be closed or would be finished. Uh, uh, after uh, receiving a uh, new view message from a future primary. But uh, in a case uh, that, I, uh, that I described below, uh, that, I, that I described above, uh, 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 we can uh, finish uh, view change uh, by uh, receiving a quorum of a new view of the same new view message from uh, the other node. And uh, as you see, uh, with, uh, as you can see, we have an integration test uh, that uh, now passed of this issue. I think that's all for my side. Can, can I please uh, say uh, integration test? Uh, integration. Nah. Can you see? It. Yep. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and uh, it passed. Thank you for taking us through it, Andrew. That it's uh, useful to understand how promotion to motion works in more detail. So thank you, Ray, for joining, and we will post another video in about two weeks with updates on on our continued progress. So thank you.